so you guys get signed to Ruthless, mm-hmm. and you guys start working on the album. Right. The album comes together. Where is NWA right now? By the time that the album gets done and everything else like that, is Ice Cube still in the, in the group? Yeah, he's actually still there at this okay. particular moment. I mean, he didn't, like after the tour, he still was going back and forth. With, he had a lot of issues with what was going on, but he still was around a bit. You know, he didn't leave. Like, I remember seeing Cube in New York when we was we had rapped um, Living Like Hustlers, and he was starting to work on, um, I think it was America's Most Wanted. Yeah. He was in there working with um, Hank, Hank and um, Hank Shockley, Hank Shockley, yeah. and uh, the Bomb Squad at the time. And we seen him. He's like, we were like, you gonna stay? You, you know what I mean? He's like, nah, I'm, I'm gone, man. You know, and that was it. That was like the winner of. That was maybe like, I think, because we were in New York doing press for Living Like Hustlers, mm-hmm. and that may have been like January of 1990. So he was around all the way up to. I didn't see him exit until like December. January of, of December 89, January of like um, 90. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Ice Cube was a major member. Absolutely. This was not just, you know, someone who was doing, this wasn't a Mexican dude on, you know, the, the, <laughs> wasn't a guy you know, holding the, the, light. the NWA and the Posse album. You know? He wasn't a guy holding the light. The, yeah, it wasn't <laughs> that guy. Yeah. This was the he guy was that the wrote light. most of the songs. Absolutely. That rapped. A lot of the songs absolutely was a standout rapper. I feel next to Easy E. Right. So when Ice Cube left, what was the mm-hmm. feeling at Ruthless? I mean, to be honest with you, it, it was it was kind of disheartening because, like, I think we looked at like I'll, I'll take it from the perspective of above the law. Like we're homies. We grew up together. We hustle together. We want to put together a group like them. Like, oh, I'm over here. I'm over there. Um, but we always looked at them like that. We always looked at them like more like they were like the downest homies, the coolest people to hang out with. And when that happened, it was like everything got exposed, you know, and around Ruthless, it was like a question mark, really. But then you have to think like we're really young and it's a lot of money coming in. So who knows what's going on? OK, for real. like we're mad young. We're like in our we're like, ni- you know, 19, 20, 20. And none of us is over 25 at this point. Okay. You know what I mean? So we're like, yo, like, is it the money? Is it, is it ego? Is it, you know, and it was all kind of rumors that swirled around. He wants to be, you know, he, he wants to be easy. Um, uh, he wants to be the man or whatever. But when you're young, you know, as I look back at it, like when you're young, you think about like, oh, you just want to be the man. We all, you know, we all eating right now, you know, but you don't know what everybody's eating. Right. You know, so for us, we was like, hey, well, you know, if he feel like that, everybody got to do what they got to do. Okay. You know? Now, mm-hmm. you guys were working through a production company, right? But you were still dealing with Ruthless Records, absolutely. Once yeah. you got signed, yep. So, what was it like dealing with Jerry Heller during that time? Oh man, Jerry Heller. To me, on one note, Jerry Heller was he was solid. On another, on another note, I could say that he always was pro what he wanted to do. You know, and I and I think about it. You know, like saying like, okay, okay, as a businessman, you look at it, but you're a young guy coming in. And it's like, he's going to press you and push you all kind of ways to see if you really know what's going on if you're not, or you don't know what's going on. Like, yeah. if the way we came in is that we came in with lawyers. Okay. You know, we came in like that. So we came in with representation. We didn't come in with well, some back alley deal where, because we always looked at it like, you know, Jerry Heller's an executive. So we knew, okay, in order to deal with the executives, we got to have our paperwork straight, basically. Mm-hmm. We can't go in here. But he, would, he, he, would, he, was, he was really, really hard-nosed a lot. You know, I had to, you know, I've gotten into it with Jerry. When I was, the, the craziest thing about it, when I was young, we needed something done, and no one could get through to Jerry. And I got on the phone with Jerry, and Jerry said, do you think other, any other record label will sign you in this town? And I said, hell yeah. It's a whole bunch of them. They ain't motherfucking lying. But fortunately, we signed a deal with you, and we need this money to go right here, and we need it right here immediately. And so he hung up the phone, and he called Eric. He said, you know, I like that guy, Hutch. He, <laughs> you know, he tells it like it is, and he understands. You know what I'm saying? No one else would stood up to me like that. You know? So he was like really an asshole in the early days. You know? Okay. But, I mean, good, bad, or indifference, you did, Because, you know, maybe he needed to be the asshole to go in there and make deals happen for all of us. Who knows? I Honestly, my my take on it as a businessman, as I look back to say, I don't think we could have got into those big record companies like Epic, 
Atlantic, Warner Brothers without Jerry Heller. Okay. Because they weren't accepting brothers like that up in there in 1988 and 89. So I, I interviewed Michelle A. Okay. And she spoke very highly right. about Jerry Heller. Yeah. She said that Jerry helped everyone get cars. Absolutely. Get situated, yeah. get bank accounts. He said a lot oh, of people yeah. didn't even have bank yeah. accounts. Like this. You're right. He gambled on us. Yeah. Sometimes when you gamble and you spend a lot of money, you got to make what you want back. He took a big chance on us. We were driving sixty, seventy thousand dollars cars from catching buses to even Dr. Dre having no car at all. Mm -hmm. Come on, you arm something. So, so Jerry Heller was actually putting money into the label, like his own money, or? Well, him and Easy, him and Easy, you know, Easy. They want to say he was selling dope. I don't know what he was selling out of his thing, but it was yeah. it was working. You know, I got my first legal money from him, <laughs> like li really, literally. Right. You know what I'm saying? So. <laughs> You know, so I was cool with that. And, okay. you know, and a lot of things that I learned about business, like how to be straight up about it was through Jerry. Jerry was, I, like I said, I don't really have anything bad to say about him, but the fact that he knew how to get into you. And if you didn't know how to respond and if you didn't and if you wasn't one on one with him, then he wouldn't respect you. You okay. know, he was just that hard nosed. But I don't think he was a I don't think he was a bad guy. His, his, his outlook on doing what he was doing, I think money. I think we got money so fast and at a young age, it corrupted a lot of things. Okay. You know, to be honest, that my honest take, I don't, you know. Sure. <clears throat> I haven't seen one pa piece of paperwork that he's stolen anything, though, so don't. Okay. You know what I mean? <laughs> but I just think, you know, I just think people, I came up in the industry knowing that people try what you let them, you yeah. know, and they get away with what you don't pay attention to. Th know? There was a rumor at one point <laughs> that, that the DOC signed off as publishing for a gold chain and a watch. You ever heard that rumor? I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I know. I know. I know. DLC had nice houses, cars, and all <laughs> kinds of stuff. You know, when he was at Ruthless. I mean, I don't know about all that. So that was a rumor. Yeah. I, well, I, I remember I'd heard an interview where Jerry actually was asked that, and he said, "Yeah, that's that's not true." Yeah. He said at that point in the in the, you know, maybe he said maybe the '40s or '50s that could have happened, but at that exactly. Point. I don't really think oh, that, how that could. Uh, morally, that's that doesn't even sound right. <laughs> okay, but I know any company. I know any company like any, any, any. One thing I can say that he he would always stress is that he's you know they're taking the risk like we think it's a risk by putting our music out like that, but they're taking the risk as well. You know, I mean? they don't know if it's gonna work or not. Sure. So you know, no one can come and give you the golden gates. You know what I'm saying? And give you all the gold in it. Yeah. Just because you think you're deserving of it. So Absolutely. I do understand. I did understand that at a young age. And that's why I always had attorneys look at it and say, OK, OK, what's the good stuff in there? What's the bad stuff? Because there's always bad shit in there. Yeah. It's never going to be in your favor when you're 19 years old signing a contract and you've never sold one record <laughs> to nobody. Okay. It's not going to be in your favor. No, absolutely. <clears throat> so you guys are on Ruthless. Right. You drop your first album. Living Like Hustlers. DOC drops... Well, no, DLC dropped in, in 80, remember, 89. That's before you Then guys. we dropped in 1990. Okay, yeah. yeah. So DLC mm -hmm. drops, you know, uh, okay, Easy E's out, you know, the Easy album's out, the NWA uh, Strata Compton album's out. Michelle A. Michelle A is out. Yeah. Uh, DLC is out. And Above the Law. Above the Law comes out. 1990. Right. Yep. <clears throat> Dre leaves. I'm sorry, Ice Cube leaves. Right. Okay. Ice Cube leaves the group. Mm -hmm. So then NWA starts working on 100 Miles and Running. Right. Were you involved in that? Yeah, I wrote 100 Miles and Running. The actual yeah. song? Yeah, I wrote the parts, some of Dre's and some of Easy's. I was a writer on it. Yeah. Aha. Uh -huh. And the drums I, and the drums were my drums that dropped on 100 Miles and Running. They're out of my crate. Okay. <laughs> so you were co-producing on it as well? Yeah, yeah, Ghost. You know, I was Ghost? Ghost. Yeah, I was Ghost producing, yeah. Okay. You know. And were, yeah. you go, were you actually credited? I'm credited as a writer. As a writer. On it. Yeah. Okay, but not mm -hmm. as a producer. Right, exactly. Okay. Yeah. So... Were you writing any of the disc records towards Ice Cube during that time? No, I mean, generally, like, when Hundred Miles of Running was done, it really wasn't, I, it wasn't targeted at that originally. It was just, like, more like everybody coming at us, so we just niggas running. We just niggas on the run. But there were know. some Ice Cube disses. Oh, no, some jabs in there. No <laughs> doubt. Yeah, no doubt. So we had to yeah. get rid of Benedict Arnold. Exactly, yeah. Well, was that Dre saying that? That's Dre said that. And you yeah. wrote that? I didn't write that part. I okay. wrote the easy part. I wrote part of Easy's and part of his. I can't remember what part okay. it was, but yeah. So, so Dre decided to throw that in. Yeah, all all the jabs and stuff. I mean, it, it kind of in reality, Vlad, it's like this. Like, not that, you know, everybody makes it seem like, you know, the breakup was like supposed to be like, 
cool or that's never that's like an ex you know what yeah. i mean so i could see them feeling a little bitter because no one really felt like it was wrong at the particular moment you know what i mean like no one thought what was going on was wrong you know no one thought like jerry was underhanded no he's the only one who thought that so he kind of was on his own so it's kind of like if we all rolled like this what's your problem yeah. and i think that's what people didn't grasp at the time but it's like if we all brothers and we rolling with some just roll with us you know what i mean you you know it's like no one and you're young so i think that's why that kind of you know was put in there because they really felt like okay we all agreed to it you know why don't you just agree to it we just roll together okay you know if it works out fucked if it's, if it's fucked up for us then it's fucked up if it comes out good then it's good you know so i think that's what they meant meant by his you know by them being like that because they weren't, NWA wasn't, they didn't miss a beat by him leaving, but they did feel like it was like, oh, you just said fuck us and left, yeah. you know, basically. You know, even though he was right, you know what I mean? You think ultimately but he was right? I think so. Because, because to me, I think he was right because if, it, if, if he wasn't allowed to look at it the way he wanted and get a fair shake out of it, it's wrong. You at least supposed to give a man an opportunity to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, and he was just the smartest at a young age. And he was a person that's like, OK, I can bear the I can bear the brunt of it right now. You know what I'm saying? I you know, his vision was a little bit different than they were, I believe. Right. You know, well, I remember in the movie, one of the things there was a scene where he was asking Dre why he signed. Exactly. And Dre said, I got I got a kid. Absolutely. Like, yeah. I think he probably had more than one kid by that. Absolutely. Point. <laughs> yeah. He's like, I, I need this money. That's right. And yeah. uh, I guess Q came from like a two parent household. And exactly. I guess yeah, he, his circumstances are a little bit different than his, you know. Yeah. And 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 and, and I want to say like this. Everybody's decisions that they make is their decisions. It, it, it It's right for them. You know what I mean? But one thing I will say in this interview is that I think, and this is my friend, my dear friend, Easy. I think if it meant for NWA breaking up, that it was a problem with everybody, with Jerry Heller, I think he should let Jerry Heller go. You know, and that's just my honest take on it. Okay. Because you can't, don't forfeit the team for one player. Okay. You get what I'm saying? And and, and a GM at that. Well, you know, <laughs> it, it's it's like a you know you're at the you're at the team where you're at the point where your where your franchise is a winning franchise, yeah. and if everyone's having problem with the GM and the GM's the problem, you need to let him go, and that's a young mistake. You understand? That is a young mistake, because if if I lose my franchise player because he's having problem with the GM, and and everybody's kind of like because there were question marks. Everybody had question marks. Mm -hmm. You know. Not that Jerry was a bad guy, but I'm saying if Eric was a, 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 a more seasoned CEO, he would have let the GM go. Do you think that Easy felt like he wouldn't be there at all if it wasn't for Jerry? His heart. That's his heart. That's his heart. So he Not was just, the business he part. He was being loyal. There you go. His heart. It was more yeah. of a hey, one thing I could say about, about Eric was, was that, that Eric really built, he, he had gratitude for people. You know what I mean? If you did something for him, the smallest thing you did for him, he he really appreciated it. You know, and that was his demise in that situation. I feel. Okay. It would have never happened if if what I'm talking about would it would have never happened. No one would have had a chance to in, infiltrate Suge, not anybody. Okay. If he would have just been a more seasoned CEO, but he was a young kid from Compton with all of this money that came in, he's like, okay, this wouldn't have never happened if I'd still be selling drugs. Yeah. You know, and I can I can feel what he's saying, you know. Sure. What was the feeling at Ruthless Records when No oh Vaseline my God. came out? I mean, when I heard No Vaseline, I was like, oh my God. First, it was comedy. <laughs> Second, it was hard as hell. Right. And, uh, but you know, you know, to me, Eric took it like that's what come with it. You know what I mean? But still, fuck him. You know, because that that was his mentality, really. You know, but with us, it was like, man, that dude clowned. You know, I mean, the thing that thing that that you would have loved about being at Ruthless, everybody used to be brutally honest. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean about stuff. If some was whack or garbage, it would. I, that, I think that's why our level of, I think that's why our level of quality was so high back then. Is because we were just honest with each other, and we felt like shit. He killed. He killed it. Nobody, nobody said, nobody said anything about like the quality of what he did. Nobody tripped. Nobody, he killed that shit. 
You yeah, know? and he really kind of targeted each and every person Absolutely. in the group. With he did what he's supposed to do. Yeah. And see, that, to me, that was valid. You know what I mean? Like, now you see beefs, and it's like, it's not really valid. That was valid. They came at you, you come at them. I mean, they came at him a couple times. It was a major misunderstanding, but, hey, it was what it was. Because they felt like, okay, you left us at the height of what we were doing. You know, even though, like, Niggas for Life is one of the biggest hip hop records that was ma- ever made, you know, yeah. and it show you their stride, their rhythm was, you know, on point still. Well, you know what I mean? Well, so, to be honest, that album did not have the amount of classic songs that Straight Outta Compton had. Of course, always if, you if can't you compare. So. You if, can't if, compare if, if, if you oh, say so. You, you know, what if saying? I say so, yeah, like you if, don't agree. No, if you say so. Like, yeah. I, I, I'm not saying that I don't agree, but that's yeah. like to the person who, you know, when we're talking about success, you're talking about to where NWA didn't fall off the map because Cube a- Absolutely not. That's what we're talking absolutely about. Not. We're not going track three and track yeah. five and track seven. We're not doing that. Yeah. You know, we're we, we not we not in the hallways talking. You know what I'm saying? That's different. We're talking about like to where, okay, NWA. Put out we, a solid album. It exactly. went multi-platinum, I think. There and, you go. And yeah, so it was forth. number one, and, and yeah. no one ever in hip-hop had that, like, number one on that Hot 200 or whatever it was. Yeah. They broke records. No, absolutely. You know, so that's what I mean. I'm okay. not saying that it was, I'm not saying it, it was it, better or worse. I'm just saying. It, it just didn't have a, a Fuck the Police or a, a Straight Outta Compton. You know, like like songs of that caliber that still get played today. And oh, get, of course. And get the same type of reaction. Oh, of course. Oh, like, of if course, you play... Yeah. Fuck the police, and you play always oh, into something. You're gonna see a very different reaction. Oh no doubt. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's all I'm saying. I agree. I mean, and I, I bought both albums, so right. you know, and I bought the Above the Law album. So right. you know, what I mean, I was I was a big ruthless supporter. No, 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 no. And, yeah. and don't don't get me wrong. I'm not I'm not saying that. I'm just saying when when you look at success, they still had the same momentum. They, the they same already momentum. had that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you can't. They can't do fuck the police part two, three, five, and seven. They can't. You know what I mean? You okay. can't do that. I Fair mean, enough. it d- doesn't make it as classic anymore. Okay. You know? <laughs> so he was very honest, and he says, I don't write that way. I don't know how. So Drake was just kind of showing him how to take his ideas and turn them into a story and to make that story come back around. He basically was like, like, let me know. I know who you is. I know we got a lot of the same people, man, but we ain't, we ain't dead, nigga, basically. And I, my, I was, like, on a defense. 